visually with Lightning App Builder Deep Dive webinar. Uh, I am with the Salesforce Developer Relations team and really happy to be joined here with Eric Jacobson, who is the Senior Director of Product Management and the, the Lead Product Manager for Lightning App Builder. Uh, say hello, Eric. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Thanks for joining us. Excellent. Of course, before we get started, <clears throat> uh, we have to cover one very important piece of business, and that is our safe harbor statement. That's right. Uh, please make your purchasing decisions based only on features that are GA and live in the product today. Any forward-looking statements may reflect nothing to do with what reality may become in the future. Uh, so always, uh, uh, always be aware of that. If you want to read the whole thing, um, it's on the website, so go check that out. All right, so our agenda this, uh, this uh, well, it's afternoon for me. I'm based in the UK. This morning, for those of you on the West Coast of the United States and something in between or somewhere else, uh, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, so we're pretty much done with the welcome and kickoff. We're going to jump right into Salesforce One Lightning overview, uh, do a little in-depth with Lightning App Builder, uh, some demos. Um, Eric's going to show some demos. I'm going to show a couple of app demos. We'll talk a little bit, and then we'll wrap up with some Q&A. Hopefully, that's what everyone signed up for. So with that, I'll pass it off to Eric to do the deep dive on Salesforce One Lightning App Builder. Perfect. Thanks, Peter. Okay. So we're going to start off with just a little bit, a little bit of, a little bit of background about Lightning, and use that to help transition into the app builder discussion here. But let's talk about why we created Lightning and what's the problem that we're trying to solve here. And fundamentally, it's a problem about apps. So we've all got these incredible smartphones in our pockets. And they're filled, they're filled full of apps that we use to help make our daily lives better. We've got apps that, that optimize, optimize our, our communications, apps that optimize our productivity. But one of the things that we're, that we're sorely missing are apps to make our business lives better. Yet we spend more than, more than half hours Working, working at our jobs, yet we're missing the apps that we could actually make use of to make ourselves more productive in those jobs. And so the reason that this is historic, it takes too much time, too much cost, too much effort to build those apps, and therefore corporations just don't build them. And this is what, re what results in what we like to refer to as the app gap. And this is the difference between the apps which you could make use of and the apps that you actually have. Now, at Salesforce, we think that we've got, a, we've got a great solution to this problem. And that solution is through, is through Lightning. And Lightning allows us to simplify the traditional development cycle here. We're not going to fundamentally change this cycle. We still need to connect to data. We need to, we need to applications. And then once we've done all of that, we're handing it off to our users to try out those apps. However, that's not the end of the cycle. In fact, that's really just the beginning because once you, once you put an app in the hands of your user, you're going to get feedback. And it's that feedback that's going to allow you to improve the app and actually make it useful to your users. So what we've been able to do with, with the Salesforce platform is to make this process much less painful, make it much more efficient. The way that we're doing that is with our Lightning platform. So the way you can think of Lightning is that Salesforce One Lightning is the next generation of the Salesforce One platform. In fact, you've already been using Lightning. If you've been running Salesforce One on your, on your iPhone or your Android phone, you've actually had Salesforce One Lightning. You just didn't know it. Because this is the technology that we've been using internally here to build these mobile applications for the last, for the last few years now. And we've just now taken it to the next level by exposing it to our developers, to our users, to our admins to be able to harness this lightning, this incredible power, to be able to create their own customizations on top of our platform. And this is truly revolutionary because for the first time, users are actually using the exact same technology to customize our platform that we use internally to build the platform. And this has some incredible advantages in the sense that you have a great, uh, great synthesis of the component framework the builder, and, the underlying, and all of the underlying components of the framework there to be able to do some really powerful things. The, the Lightning platform is, um, is the foundation here and allows us to build some really incredible apps here. Okay. Now, 
to harness this power, we have a great new tool for you, which is called the Lightning App Builder. And this, the, this is a declarative tool, which means that you can build apps with clicks as opposed to code. We're going to make app builders out of everybody because all you need to do is point and click, drag and drop, and you can build applications that are going to run on any device where Salesforce One platform runs. So today, the apps that you build in the app builder can run on your phone or your tablet. But you can imagine as we, as we, um, as we expand the platform, you can, you can imagine these apps running on larger screens or even smaller screens, perhaps say something like a smartwatch. So there's a, there's a great potential there for a diverse set of applications. Now, what can I build with the Lightning App Builder? Well, fundamentally, the apps that you build are single-page applications. However, they can drill down to existing standard pages. So you have a lot of ability to access the functionality of the Salesforce One container there to see details. And you can make use of the global actions to create some really rich interactive apps because you can have you can have actions that you attach to your application that can create records and even then subsequently trigger processes. You can use these, you can use these technologies then to build things like dashboard style applications. For example, a sales leaderboard. Another type, in fact, my personal, my personal favorite use case for the app builder is to build what I like to refer to as point applications. And these are solutions to a particular business problem. Say, for example, if I want to manage my expenses, wouldn't it be great to have just a, a list of recent expenses and a one-click button access to be able to go in and add a new expense? It allows you to get in, get the task done, and move on without any distraction. So here are some examples of those different types of apps that you might see inside of Salesforce One. The first picture there, all the way on the far left, in fact, is the Salesforce One CRM application. Because Salesforce One is both a mobile application as well as the platform that allows you to build your own mobile application. In the middle could be an example of one of those dashboard style apps. Perhaps I want to have my key accounts right at my fingertips there. So I could build a key account manager app that presents that information to me in a nice, easy to consume fashion. Or lastly, say I want to build one of those point applications. In fact, this is an app we use internally here at Salesforce that allows us to uh, record and review feedback on our Salesforce One application. So it's giving me, you know, a couple of key options there so that I can see the data and I can post and I can post the new feedback all right at my fingertips without without any form of distraction. So within an app that you build in the Lightning App Builder, there are a couple of key um, key regions or key parts of the application that make it up. So first off is what we refer to as the Lightning Page. And this is the container that then holds a series of Lightning components. And we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail. And then additionally, as I mentioned, you can have global actions. And they'll appear at the bottom there in that action bar. And so these are the basic components of a Lightning app. Now, the apps that you build are designed to be responsive. And what that means is that they will automatically work on multiple devices and that they can potentially change the way they display depending on the device where you're using them. So for example, you can see there are two different diagrams shown over on the right there. One just says that it has a single region on a phone, a tablet, or a landscape tablet. But the lower, the lower diagram is showing you that there's two regions. Now in that two region template, you actually have a little bit more flexibility because when you're on a tablet, you have, a little, you have more screen real estate, which means that we can display components side by side. However, when you're on a phone, you have less screen real estate, so what we do is we take those regions of components or groupings of components and stack them on top of one another. So you still have full access to all your components, but we automatically, responsively adjust the display of that page for you depending on the device where you're consuming it. In the Spring 15 release, we support phone and tablet, as I mentioned before, um, with, with, these, with these existing templates here. Now, let's talk a bit about components. You may be wondering why, I'm thinking, why I've got a screen full of Lego blocks here. And the point is, is that components are the building blocks of your application. And this is really the way you should think about constructing an application. It is a series of these blocks that fit together. Now, with the Lightning Platform, one of the great things is that we have a wide variety of different types of components and different sources of components. So to begin with, there are standard components, which are components that are going to be provided to you by Salesforce. And so within the app builder, I'll cover the set of components that are there by default. 
And if that set does not fully meet your needs, you can you can you can reach out to a developer, and it can be a developer within your organization or a or a contracted developer, and they can build you a custom component that's specific that's specific to your organization. And then lastly, if that doesn't if that doesn't if that's not an option for you, another great alternative is the App Exchange community. And so we're just now starting to see the first packages of components be published to the App Exchange. These are, these are a great way to uh, find these building blocks without needing to code them yourself. So within the, within the app builder, Salesforce is currently providing five standard components. And these are a great starting point to build pretty much any type of application that we've talked about so far. So you've got a filter list component that's going to be able to go and grab um, any, of your list, any of your list views from standard or custom objects. A recent items component that you can tune to one or more entities so you can view recent, recent items from that. A report chart that will grab any of your shared reports that have charts on them and you can bring those on so you can build up those dashboard style applications. A rich text component that will allow you to place some static text right onto your application screen. And then lastly, a visual force page, which is a way you can leverage your existing investments in visual force if you've built mobile enabled visual force you can actually bring those into your lightning apps as well. So rather than just keep talking about it, I'd actually like to take you into the app builder and let's let's actually build an app. In fact, we're going to we're going to go beyond just building an app. Remember I mentioned that a key piece of the app builder is it allows you to accelerate that application development cycle. So we're actually going to build and iterate over an app in just a couple of minutes here and we'll actually build out several versions of our key application. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to my browser, and we can go ahead now. I'm in setup, and the way we find our app is over on the left-hand side in the setup tree. We can look in the build section there for the Lightning App Builder, and I'll go ahead and hit new because I'm going to create a new app. It asks me to create my Lightning page, so we'll call this one TripForce 2016. So we're looking at it for fiscal year 2016, and we'll go ahead and pick that we want our responsive two-column template. Remember I mentioned there were those two different templates we could use. So now is that when the app builder loads here, three times, over on the left-hand side, I have my list of components. I have my standard components and my custom components. In the middle, I have my design surface or my work area that allows me to see my components and I can actually see the arrangement of them on a phone or for a tablet. And then over on the right hand side, I have my I have my property editor that'll allow me to either edit my page properties or the properties of a particular component. So let's start building our page. We're going to start by bringing over a list of trips. We'll tune that into the trip object. We can specify which filter list we want, even how many records we want it to display. So we can see our, our list of trips there. And then let's see, maybe we want to do a few additional things with it. Perhaps we want to see a more graphical presentation of our trip information. So we want to see them as a, um, as a chart. Well, we've already got a report built and share that has our that has this trip data. So we can have and add a little bit of a little bit of this population here. And we'll say that this is this is giving us access to FY16. So we can see that we've got our key trips there. Okay. Now we've got a pretty a pretty decent start to building out this little application. If I want to go and see what this looks like, I can go ahead and save my application. And then to make it available to me inside of Salesforce One, all I then need to do is go and activate my application. So we're going to go ahead and hit the activate link there. We can go ahead and we can pick an icon for our app. This is a trip app, so I kind of like the airplane icon for it. We decide where we want to place it inside the mobile navigation inside of Salesforce One. I'm going to move this one up nice and close to the top there, right beneath my feed, so it's easy to find. And then I'll hit the activate button. And that's all I need to do to create and publish my application. It is now available to me inside of Salesforce One. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my Salesforce One simulator here, and we'll go ahead and just uh, refresh so that it updates and grabs. 
And now if I, scroll, if I bring up my mobile navigation here, you'll see that the item right beneath my feed is there's our trip for Asia that we had just built. Um, the apps here are responsive. So I'm right now looking at it on my phone. If instead I wanted to see my simulator over here into tablet view, and you'll see that my application automatically became a two-column application as opposed to that single-column application. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that these apps are not just single-screen applications. They actually do have some depth to them. So, for example, we're looking at a list, we're looking at a list of trips here from this filter list. So, if I want to drill in, I can actually I can actually slide over on any of those rows there and expose row-level actions of that filter list as well as click on one of them to drill in and see the details of any of those objects. And that works for standard or custom objects alike. And the great thing about that is it maintains the context. It knows where I was. So I can, so I can use the back arrow there to take me right back to my application and continue, and continue right where I left off. Now, I think this is a pretty good start to this little application. But you know what? Data visualization is really important. And perhaps I want to have a couple of other ways to see um, to see my to see my trips. So let me see what else I can what else I can do to uh, jazz up this application a little bit. I'm going to switch back over to the Lightning App Builder for a moment here, and let's see. You know, trips are a very geographical type of data. So perhaps instead of just looking at them as a list or as a chart, maybe we'd like to see them in a map. Well, as you can see, the standard component here does not give me an option for a map component. So let's go ahead and just do a little search in our component list here. And you can see I've actually got a few different choices of maps that I could potentially use now in my application here. Because these are custom components that I've installed in, in my org here. And I've got one that I've been doing a bit of work on called the trip map. And let's see what that one's going to do for us. See you later one more time. And there we go. We can see now that our trip map is actually showing up here in our simulator. And it's giving us the ability now to see, for example, here we can actually see each of those, each of those states. And it's color coding basically showing us the concentration of trips for any given state. Looks like we've got the most, the most happening here in California, closely followed by New York, and then Illinois are coming, are coming in kind of third and fourth there. But the idea is to give you just some, some other ways of looking at that data. Now, we're making, now we're making some good progress. But I think we can, I think we can do more to make this app into, a little bit more interactive. Remember I mentioned that we can make use of those uh, global actions to, make, to provide some more interactivity to allow us to perhaps post notes about our trips and integrate that capability into our application. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and add that in. So we're going to jump to our app builder again, and we're going to add some global actions. So we'll do that by selecting the actions list here, and we can bring up a couple of, a couple of actions that we have. The first of those is a new trip note. And then perhaps I also might want to have the ability to record a new opportunity while, while I'm doing that, and maybe even a new event. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now, the one other thing I want to be able to do, however, is I want to be able to see those recent trip notes. So I'm going to add a recent items component to my application here, and I'm going to tune it so that instead of it showing me recent accounts, it actually has the ability to show me recent trip notes. So it will now show me a list of my recent trip notes. Once again, we'll save that application. As I'm, making, as I'm making these subsequent iterations and these changes to my application, you notice all I need to do is save. There's no reason, there's no need to subsequently activate after the first time. So once, you, once you've built your application and published it, all you need to do is save it to get those changes done. We'll go ahead and refresh our application here and take a look at it one last time. So there we've got our trip force 2016, packed with our, with our list of states. I list the trips down here, but notice at the very bottom of the screen, I now have my action bar showing, showing me my potential actions. So I'm going to go ahead and select that first one there, which is my trip note. And let's say, uh, welcome to the App Builder webinar. This is kind of, con this is connected to all of the Lightning Week, Lightning Week events that we've been doing over the last week or so and continuing on throughout March. So we'll go ahead and put that there. Talk with everyone. So we'll go ahead and save our trip note. 
brings us back here, it tells us the note was, was successful. But what's even what's even cooler about it is if I go ahead and scroll up my page here and do a uh, scroll down so that it refreshes the data, you'll notice that my recent item has automatically updated there. So it's now actually showing me the uh, the new the new uh, note that I just created. So now in the span in the span of just a few minutes, we've actually gone through and iterated and we've built three versions of this Lightning application in the App Builder. So I think that we've got, I think we've made some pretty good progress in improving the app development lifecycle there. So as you get feedback from your users, you'd be able to really quickly and easily incorporate it and evolve your application to, to meet the needs of your of your users. So with that, um, let me hand it over to Peter, who's going to show us a couple other examples of apps that we can build in the app builder, and then we'll, and then we'll show, provide you up with the last few resources that we can help with. Excellent, Eric. Yep. So let me bring up my Salesforce One mobile simulator here. Now, uh, there were some questions about this mobile simulator. Um, I did answer. We know this is a Chrome plugin that both Eric and I are using, and all it's doing is it's just wrapping a, a request to the URL one slash one dot app. Uh, many of you have probably used that in your. The um, nice thing about this is it, it looks like a phone, which makes things a lot nicer. I suppose. Um, so the first app. So um, I think kind of fits the description of what Eric uh, described as a point app. Uh, excellent. All right. So um, uh, so the show really kind of fits the description of what we would call a uh, point app. And um, I have it over here. It's called Quick Spend. And I actually created this app full of components that uh, I got from a while back, and I uh, kind of change them to a different object, and then added, added another component. I'm three different components on the app. You can see if I select events uh, here, it populates the card up top. And one of the nice things is because uh, components are lightning components, and be because the entire mobile user is on that uh, on particular expense, it actually taking me to the normal expense uh, screen or a page in my Salesforce One mobile application. So I can see my related list, I can see my detail. Go back, it takes me right back to the Lightning App Builder. Uh, in addition to that, App Builder apps can also use standard quick action functionality, it has been in the Salesforce One mobile app for a long, long time. So I actually even have to add here to create a new expense. I can use a quick action for that and it'll bring that here and so we will say uh, printing expenses and uh, that cost me 50 it cost me one save and then that takes me back I get the little printing expenses and I can go and see that. Now the last one I have here is this little file upload here you can see, obviously, I'm using a simulator. This isn't coming from my mobile phone, but I'll, I'll grab a, a, a picture that I took a while back. And I will select that. For this file upload to work, I had to be aware of the event of selecting the expense because I had to pass it the actual record ID for the attachment. If I actually go to printing expenses over here and in my related look at notes and attachments, I can see that my receipt I just uploaded. So I really love this type of application because it really demonstrates how nicely Salesforce One Lightning components integrate with the rest of Salesforce One Mobile. And, and it's the reason. The same events that Lightning components fire, that's what Salesforce One stands. Um, in addition to that, you can wire your components in a certain way so that they're aware of each other. Uh, <coughs> So this component at the top of my card, this list component is another component, was able to have a listen for that event and with these other two components that Eric built. Make it a lot easier to access the way that Lightning Components works with the Lightning App Builder itself. Uh, the last one I want to the uh, the app builder in the back with this. Um, so I'll go down here. It's oops. It is actually up. There, uh, orders dashboard. Now um, 
I kind of set myself the task of creating some kind of custom drink component. And you can see it says zero right now, and that's because it's making uh, what appears to be a relatively long to its back end. Uh, now, the fun thing about this is that this is data that's not even my Salesforce org. This data is actually being populated using something called Lightning Connect. Lightning Connect is another one of these new Lightning features. And so this is actually a uh, Postgres database that never the order data in it. I think, and it makes that it refreshes. So that's what it looks like. In the now, one thing that, uh, that build using Visual, for any of you saw when Eric was in the App Builder, uh, in Lightning App Builder to use a Visual for agent, and many of you are going to be really tempted, maybe, to use Visual. You're already very familiar with building Visual Force pages. I know I was tempted because I'm familiar with building Visual Force pages. These four instances of the one component are sharing one component, four different requests for the same type of design. But because of the way Lightning Components works, and I. Th it might be kind of fun, some developers out there, it might be kind of fun to just throw this in the um, uh, in the dev console. If I go and bring up my dev console, you can see that it's got a few requests that have popped up in there, and we'll go ahead and just clear those out to uh, just to make it very obvious what's going on. So we'll clear my log panel. There they are. They are all gone. Uh, I'll go back to my um, to my app and do a refresh. And so one, two, three, four components making an individual request back to Salesforce gets bundled up, and eventually we have one single request back to Salesforce. This is the kind of efficiency that if I'm a developer build something for mobile in particular, um, this is efficiency I want to take advantage of. So I really, uh, as a developer advantage, as a developer myself, I'm lazy. If I know how to do something in one technology, I kind of want to stick with that technology, even if there's something new. Um, I really want to, to challenge the developers out there who are thinking, I already know Visual, I'm going to use that Visual Force component, to dive deep into Lightning Components and learn how they work, because you'll get to take advantage of some of these underlying features that are completely absent in your Visual Force um, apps. Now, if you have a Visual Force that's working and you want to use that, time to develop new features, you don't have time to learn Lightning Components today, I totally get it. You have to deliver your functionality. But at the same time, uh, you know, eventually get Lightning Components. You'll, in the builder itself, you can see that, so these are different uh, components and the labels here are based on the actual label. Uh, we have a threshold, uh, so it goes in and makes a new request and we can see that. <clears throat> The, the color of these different, uh, if I want to have this a little bit less blue, then uh, I could change that to an A maybe. Um, and you know, what I would say is if you're not a developer, don't be deterred by this stuff because underneath all of this, it's all well. So the thing is that, you know, this color value, that's all fine and good. Uh, but at the same time, I could change this to something uh, pretty like cyan uh, component, don't they? There we go. So um, it's just HTML colors underneath this. So provided the component's built the right way, you have lots of different options of making that work. All right. Um, so that pretty much wraps up the uh, component I wanted to show. So um, go ahead and go back to Eric. He's going to talk a little bit about um, uh, Roadmap for Lightning App Builder, and then uh, to move on and uh, things up, uh, and do Q&A, and then we'll wrap things up. So, Eric, I'm making you present her now. Sounds good. Thanks, Peter. Down there. Okay. Okay. So, um, actually. Been, there's been several questions that have come in, and I figure I will address a couple of those right now because it kind of it factors right into talking about roadmap here. So the app builder is currently available as a pilot for production orgs for 
new developer orgs where as part of, as part of the Lightning Week and all of these events here now, we are making the Lightning App Builder available to new developers as what we're referring to as a developer beta. We'll be providing a link a little bit later in the webinar and we'll make sure that you have available access to it to be able to go ahead and sign up for a new developer edition org that has the App Builder automatically enabled for you. Availability. And App Builder, we are on track for it to be available as a GA in the summer 15 release. So once again, that is, that is with the um, qualification for the next major release of Salesforce to make the App Builder GA for phone certainly part of our roadmap and it's part of the overall Salesforce roadmap as we um, as we roll out the next generation of our desktop platform. You can see being a key piece of scenario for that for that platform. So talking a little bit about our roadmap here, obviously desktop is something that we are working towards for the future there. Having a having a robust ecosystem of components is really critical here and one of the things that we will be working towards is making the experience for uh, finding and installing and managing components within the app builder as seamless as possible. A, you can imagine that process becoming even more seamless, even more integrated into your into your app building experience as we as we um, move forward over the next several releases. We'll be adding support for other types of pages, for example, to let you get in with so record specific and will give you the ability to edit the details of, a, of an individual record. Support for multiple page applications, so applications that have multiple screens that are linked together, and the ability to have branding and visual customization really uh, carry that carry your branding through to that next level. So these are all things that are that are that are coming for the future of the app builder. Want to learn about how Lightning components work and get started with that, and then finally Lightning Connect, which is what I was using as the back end for my um, my little donut chart component. Uh, check those out if you do want to webinars. Go to developer.salesforce.com/calendar. Is a developer beta currently for Lightning App Builder? A lot of questions around this as well. Partner, go to your partner relationship manager. Ask to nominate you for the pilot program. There's a small amount of paperwork to be done. It's fairly straightforward to get that enabled. All right. Uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, we're actively monitor channel on uh, the official Lightning App Builder chatter group on Success Community. Um, so get out there, ask some questions, uh, see what you can find out there. This graphic. How, how can you? boys in raccoon suits. Online self-paced learning tool uh, and we're launching on Trailhead on a regular basis. We've just launched two, one for customizing Salesforce One Mobile with Visual Force and another one for Chatter. Um, the other thing is that uh, I believe, Eric, uh, we're beginning work on a Trailhead module for Lightning App Builder. Is that not correct? That's correct. It should be. It should be. It should be appearing fairly soon. Excellent. Cool. So go check out Trailhead. And that pretty much wraps it up. So um, let's see if uh, we can go through and do a little bit of Q and A on some of the remaining questions. Have you been able to grab any or collate any yourself, Eric? Yeah, I've got a couple here. So let me, let me cover a couple, a couple of kind of key high-level ones. Um, so we've already, we've already talked quite a bit about what, what it takes to get access um, to the App Builder at the moment. Um, so the easiest way is going to be to go and sign up for a new developer edition org that has the App Builder developer beta automatically enabled. Otherwise, you know, we, um, you can go through the nomination process with your account exec or your, part, or your partner relationship manager for your existing production org. There's been some question about what the licensing is going to be. So the app builder will, the app builder will ultimately be available to, to all um, group edition and above organizations automatically. There's no additional licensing required for the app builder. Um, so we want to, we really want admins and all orgs to be able to get in there and start building apps visually. So it's a, it's a key piece 
of the of the fourth.com platform and therefore included for, for all the worms. Let's see, what else can we have? So, so um, a, question, a question about how many global actions can you show? So you can add as many global actions to the to the app as you wish. The action bar at the bottom of the screen will display up to the first four with quick launch buttons for you there. If you place any more than four actions on the page, you will get a fifth button that is a dot 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 button. And you tap that and it'll bring up it brings up a sheet that gives you a list of all of the actions. You can add as many as you want. Um, make sure you make sure you put them in the order that, the order of importance so that the uh, that the key ones are going to show up on the action bar at all. Um, I had grabbed one that I thought might be interesting. Um, along, kind of along the same lines, how many charts can you put on a page? And I, so I think, I think um, that's really more like how much space are you allowed to take up in those columns? I mean, can you literally have kind of an infinite page off the bottom there? I think I have a truly infinite page. Um, <laughs> you're, you're allowed to – there is a limit that you can put up to 25 components regions. Got it. So if you're using so if you're using the the responsive two column number, you can a maximum of fifty components. <laughs> and so that's that's what I was going to say is that just because you can does not always mean you should. You definitely want to you definitely want to try and make your application really tuned so that it gives your users the information that that they need right the specifics there. And you'll want to make sure that you tap that application because to it like that, especially if you bring up the still can have an adverse effect against the back end data. So there was a question um, about uh, App Builder for desktop, and it brings up uh, sort of to extend that a little bit. Um, what is your team about now, Eric, as far as your templates might be introduced in the not too distant future? Is there anything you can share with us that? Sure. We're certainly, we certainly, we think templates are the key to flex responsive design because it allows you to have the, it allows you to have the screen very, in a very easy to manage fashion. So as part of the, as part of the G we are looking, we are looking for templates. Uh, at this point, they still will be focused on phone and tablet. However, we will be adding some custom, some custom display capability for landscape orientation on a tablet device. Because we know, for example, when you when you turn your iPad or Galaxy, or Galaxy you actually do have a bigger than you when you're in portrait. So we can provide we can provide some different um, some different arrangements, perhaps say a three column template or something along those lines. Excellent. Uh um, so there's a question here that I think I'll um, respond to. Hey, Peter, you talked about App Builder. What about developing Lightning app using the developer console? This is a little bit of a um, – because we never do this at Salesforce. We have kind of the same for two different things. Uh, the Lightning component framework, so the, the underlying framework that is Lightning components, actually has a, a feature in it called an app. We're building an app, so I'm going to take a stab at explaining this. And uh, and and Eric, if you have any um, good words, uh, how you, I'll, I'll take your input as well, because I sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. It, so anybody who's slash one dot app, that is a that is context of Lightning Component Framework. It's a requestable URL. It takes a whole buzzer's screen. Now, App Builder, we're calling that well. Uh, App Builder is as a page, a screen pager. Uh, to clarify there, um, the app, the app build, the app tool itself is, a, is built as a Lightning app. And then the apps, that, then the apps that you build using the App Builder are Lightning pages, and those right. Lightning pages. At, at this point, only render inside of the Salesforce One container. Exactly. Hopefully, that clears up that question. You have to build an App Builder app in Developer Console. You would be building there is a Lightning Components app, and that's that 
requestable URL where it takes up your whole browser. And it's actually, I mean, you can build a Lightning app in that way that could go to any browser. It's not necessarily just Salesforce One Mobile like the Lightning pages are today. Now, just, just to add one more layer to the onion, um, apps that you build using the app builder, those Lightning pages, that technology is fully, it's fully accessible through the metadata API, and you can, you can access those pages as XML from that standpoint. The pages that you build with the app builder are, are packageable. They are supported in, they are supported in chain sets to move between sandbox and production. So it is, it is a, it is a fully supported part of the platform. And one of, one of the really great things there is that that underlying technology, those lightning pages, are actually are actually a GA technology. It's the app builder that we that we still have been finishing up the development on, but the underlying page technology has actually already been GA in production for a while now. Exactly. Great. Um, let's see. There was a question about custom components and having them show up in the app builder. So. Um, I expect that a bit more detail will be covered on that in the next webinar about building custom components. But just just to kind of answer it at a very high level, no, all compo all custom components aren't going to automatically show up in the app builder. You actually need to tag them by specifying an interface in the code of those components to enable them to show up inside of the app builder. And there's a good reason for this because you don't automatically want all of your custom components showing up inside the app builder. When you're building components, they kind of fall into two categories. They can either be what I like to think of as fine-grained components or coarse-grained components. And a fine-grained component might be something like a button or a checkbox or a text field. And these are not particularly good components to work with inside of the app builder where your admin is going to be dragging them around and expecting them to work without much configuration. Instead, what you're going to want to build and expose to the app builder is what we refer to as coarse grain components. And these would be things like, say, that filter list component or even that custom map component that I brought on there that potentially require very little configuration. I mean, you saw Peter's donut chart component there had about four attributes that you could configure. It wasn't overly complex, but provided a lot of value there. So those are going to be the types of components that you're going to want to build and expose to tools like the app builder. Yeah, exactly right. And <clears throat> there was actually another question: Can can admins use App Builder? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but that's the whole point of App Builder is to give non-programmers a tool so that they can build they can build applications, right? Exactly. The app, you know, this this tool, the App Builder, was designed with the admins in mind. Um, they are they are really the target user for for a tool like the App Builder. Uh, that being said, we'd love for we'd love to have developers use it as well. I think it's I think it's an incredibly way an incredible way for developers to be to be um, very productive in a in a, um, in a easy to use fashion. So developers shouldn't shouldn't be embarrassed to use the collaborative tools. They should embrace them as ways to um, to productively accomplish their work. Um, but you know, I think the app builder was certainly built for our admins to make it to make them all into app builders themselves. Excellent. So um, <clears throat> now, if, I, I may have missed it. Did you cover uh, a specific GA date or expected GA for um, Lightning App Builder? Yes, I said that. I said that we will under Safe Harbor. We are expecting to GA in summer 15, so Excellent. the next major release. All right. I still still saw that one popping through, so I thought I would uh, yeah. I'd mention that. So next question, can Lightning Pages be wrapped and referenced in an external app? Uh, and I can answer that because I, I'm, I'm, I know the answer is no today. Any, any thought of, of uh, being able to take a Lightning Page and have it surfaced um, in an external app, Eric? Certainly things that we're looking at um, in general, kind of thinking about how some of those things may work to be able to have access externally. Um, we're looking at a few different technologies for it. Um, as, we, as we continue to build out more capabilities to the entire Lightning platform, so uh, I'd say I'd say stay tuned. Uh, we don't have any we don't have any announcements around it today, but it's definitely something that we're thinking about. Great. Um, so here's an interesting, intriguing one. Do you have any examples of generic 
custom of a generic custom component. For example, one that could take an S object as a parameter. Um, well, so actually, the like several of the standard components do, don't they? Isn't that right, Eric? The um, like the, the recent items one. Absolutely, the standard components certainly do. Um, you can also check it. You can also check out uh, some of the components that have started to show up um, in the app exchange. For example, there is a package by uh, Clarisoft called the called the um, Steroid Lightning Library. It provides a couple of different components. It has a map component and a chart component, as well as a couple of um, alternative list components, and you are able to tune those into your object. You, pick, you specify the object name and the field names, and they will display that information for you. So it's absolutely possible to build, to build a generic custom component. And you know, I th I've been thinking about this a little bit too. And I, I could see having something like kind of a, a generic edit form or a generic record display form or card, um, something like that, where I could say, "This is my S object." Um, you know, go and, and bring something up. So you know, I, I think that anything that you know can be sort of applied um, across functionality for custom objects or, or standard objects um, kind of fits that description. Totally agree. All right, so I think we are <clears throat> um, maybe getting to the end here. There are certainly many more questions. Um, can you add a lightning component onto an existing Visual Force page? Uh, can we assume you cannot embed a lightning component on a custom object? Um, so no, and yes, you can assume you can. And to embed it, I assume you mean a custom object page. Um, so, uh, so as of today, there's no no ability to do that. But I would really encourage everybody who wants to find out much more about the internal working of components to go and sign up and come back and check out the Lightning Components webinar. Um, especially because this webinar, obviously, there's a big surface area where Lightning Components and Lightning App Builder overlap. Um, but we're trying to stay focused as much as possible on App Builder here. So I'd really um, encourage everyone to go and check out the Lightning Component webinar that's going to be happening. I believe that's the next one in the, uh, in the schedule. So um, we're coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, any other questions that are jumping out at you, Eric, or do you think we should wrap up here? I think we've, co I think we've covered most of them. I think the remaining questions are, are mostly focused on the specifics of building custom components. Um, You've got some great re there's some great resources that will be available to you guys uh, next week at that next webinar. I highly encourage you to attend it. Um, they'll be the experts that can really go into depth on building custom components. Excellent. So um, uh, with that, I'd like to thank everybody who attended, and um, certainly encourage you to get out there onto the uh, the success community chatter group. Uh, if you didn't get your question answered, certainly feel free to post it there. Uh, if you have a question about Lightning Components, there are also places where you can, uh, you can go ahead and ask about that. Come back to the webinars, get out to a developer group, build some apps, and go share them because that's what we love to see is our community building awesome applications and awesome functionality. Um, so Eric has posted the link to sign up for the developer org one more time. And again, if you have a production org that you want to nominate for the pilot program so you can work with the Lightning App Builder in that org, um, make sure to get in touch with your salesperson, your partner representative, or whoever it is you talk to from Salesforce on a regular basis. So that could be somebody from customer success as well. Any of us who are in Salesforce who talk to you have the ability to go in and nominate you for that pilot program. So with that, we'll wrap things up. Um, I want to thank you very much and um, have a wonderful afternoon or evening.
colony 